Hi, we are back with another edition of Real Talk with Real People. And my guest today is Penny Pavick. Hi, Penny. Hey. How are you? I'm good. How about you? I'm doing wonderful. So before we get started, I want everyone to know that Penny is my oldest sister. And I am grateful to have her on this show today because I've always admired my older sister. And she has always done great and wonderful things and I'm happy that we're going to talk about just a couple of those great and wonderful things that she has done that I have admired and one of those things that she has done was become uh and I'm gonna say this correctly this time Samaya did I say that right Penny yes (laughs) (laughs) okay now for those who don't know what a Samaya is because I just learned what it was myself why don't you tell us what that is Okay, so a Samaya is a person that's wine knowledgeable. And when I say wine knowledgeable, they're knowledgeable about wines, beers, and spirits, um, but mostly wine. But in order to pass your Samaya or to be a master Samaya, you have to know about all wines, beers, and spirits. Oh, okay. And... Um do you know about wines, beers, and spirits? Well, I know how to drink all three of them. <laughs> so do I. That's about the only thing I know about it. <laughs> yeah, so more wine than um, the beer and spirits, because I'm not a real beer um, or spirits drinker, but I am a wine drinker. And so let me just give you a little short history of wine. Um, wine has been produced for thousands of years and is completely intertwined with history in the Western civilization. Civilization, sorry. Um, and it, its modern history of wine includes the evolution of wine during the Dark Ages and the Middle Ages. And uh, you, you would not think that, but pretty much that's how it evolved. So wine is as old as goes back to uh, A.D. Uh, the monks used to make wine. Um, and it's like now it's a little bit more modern um, than it used to be. But we're talking about um, between 5,000 B.C. and 7,000 B.C. Um, they can trace wine back to. Yes. And believe it or not, wine has a DNA. Just like we have a DNA, so does wine. Um, so you can... Uh, trace their DNA back to the vines, to where it came from, um, and how old. And these are all the things that a Samaye will learn um, as they are taking the uh, course. Oh, okay. And those are things that are very interesting because when, when regular lay people like myself, when we open up a bottle of wine, we just want to know if it tastes good. But a lot goes into and that bottle of wine. And when a Samaye opens a bottle of wine, they want to know that it tastes good, too. But they're looking for a little bit more characteristics than tasting good. So a Samaye will be able to tell you once a wine has been opened and it takes, takes their first sip where the wine came from. That's number one. What type of um, grape the wine is. And it, nowadays, everything is a blend of something. So you would know have to know what type of grapes. So if it's got Malbec or um, Cabernet or Pinot, you would have to know um, all of those things. A good sommelier can just taste the wine, know the region, know the the, um, type of wine, the type of grape, the type of soil it was produced in. But bottom line is, is everybody wants a good bottle of wine that they enjoy. Exactly. Now, I know for a fact that you make your own wine. Because I've been blessed with a few bottles of those wines. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what made you want to um, make your own wine? Is it because you became a Somalia? Did you want to make um, your own wine? Or did you want to do it before you even became? You know, I think that... Um, okay, so once I became a Somalia, we went to France and uh, we went to Bordeaux. We spent uh, 14 days in Bordeaux. And the process of making wine is a very um, um, hard process. So when you in, when you buy a 
that $9 or $20 or even $60 bottle of wine in the store. Do know that a lot of hard work went into making that bottle of wine that you have. Mm -hmm. And the people that are making it, uh, the winemakers that are making this wine, I mean, they're making it for the sole purpose. Yes, they want the profit too, but it's not a, a heck of a lot of profit. But they're making it for the sole purpose of enjoyment and, you know, uh, bragging rights and lots of other little things that they, you know, wine brings to them. So it's one of those things that I just wanted to see if I could make it. And if I could make it, does it taste good? <laughs> so, of course, I've cheated because I don't own a vineyard. Right. Um, so if you own a vineyard, that is your ultimate way of making wine. So growing the, 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 the vines and growing the grapes, cultivating the grapes, taking care of the grapes, taking the grapes, and then finally that process of making wine. So it's a, it, when I say that I make wine, yeah, I do, and I make it from a kit. So it's certainly not the way a winemaker and all the hard work that they put in making wine. So I actually understand I'd like that. I like to put that out there in the atmosphere. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for saying that because that makes a lot of sense to me, and I and I actually understand that because we do get a little confused and. Um, it's important that we understand the work that goes into um, doing these things, especially when you said about um, having a, a, a vineyard. I mean, they grow their right. own grapes, <laughs> right? So I will tell you this, that a bottle of wine, a bottle of wine that you pick up in the store, those vines are very old, the grapes, because it takes, I mean, yes, every year the grapes um, harvest and they harvest the grapes, but once they make the wine, it just doesn't stop at there. You have to, um, all this wine has to, for lack of a better word, get mellowed. And, you know, it's a process. And it, that process could take sometimes, um, at a minimum, two years, but at a maximum, 25 years. So when you get a good bottle of wine and it's been aged, okay, and so sometimes you'll, you'll hear aged in an oak barrel for five years. That's how long it's taken that bottle of wine to age and for it to be put to use so it tastes like something. Because when you make the wine, it doesn't automatically taste like wine. Um, I mean, yes, it tastes like wine, but not wine that you, you want to drink right away. Okay. So it's a, it's a. Now, there are some vines that they do make wine and you can drink it right away. It's like a year old. Mm -hmm. But we're talking about the really good wines that take, you know, five years or more to actually age and be taste really good. Okay. Is that the ones that have the reserved on the bottle? Um, no. Okay. So there is a. Um, classification and I'm not going to get too much into that because it's really um, it's com it's confusing it's difficult but um, there are lots of books that you can go online and each um, there's a classification to like each wine um, and the reason why they have like um, Bordeaux is, is one for having like superior and they have all kinds of rankings. So um, this is making it simple, but not really simple enough. Okay, so they're called AOC regulations. And what that is, is they, they put the wine in its origin, the approved grape, the harvest, the yield, the aging regimen, and um, it, it's called Viticulture, V-I-T-I -I culture. And so that's pretty much like the soil and stuff. So it is ranked by that. So when you look on a bottle and it has, uh, let's see, uh, superior, like Bordeaux Superior, mm -hmm. well, do you know that that's not the, not the top line of the grape? That's like the fourth. So these grapes are like mashed. First, first mash and it's drained. Mm -hmm. That's the best wine, okay? And what happens is, especially in, in wines from France and wines from Napa and uh, Sonoma, the first batch that comes out are the most expensive batches of wine. And they're like, um, 
they're bought by futures. So, you know, um, they would go to the vineyard, like, okay, let me make, give you an example. So if I would go to the vineyard today mm-hmm. and the vines are in harvest, I would buy all of that wine. But it wouldn't be available to me until maybe five or ten years because that's when it would be aged. But it's bought like that. So the very first batch is the very best batch of the wine. And then you've got your second batch, which is your second best batch of the wine. Then you've got your, and these are all from the same grapes. So Mm -hmm. they mash the first batch and then they put the grapes back. They take, you know, they, they juice it again. So the second juice is your second best Mm -hmm. and then they juice it again that's your third best now once they start juicing it the fourth and fifth time that's where you get like your table wine your very inexpensive wine it's still good wine but you know it's not the very best okay and i think i just veered off of what we were talking about no 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 this is good information no i'm excited to hear all this because i'm going to ask you what would a good bottle of wine cost someone like me? I'm not rich, so I, I can't be spending okay. thousands of dollars on a bottle of wine. Okay, so this is no joke. I am not a snobby wine drinker. I have drank a bottle of wine that cost literally $250. Mm-hmm. I have drank a bottle of wine that cost $150. I've drank a bottle of wine that cost $100. And I drank your everyday wine. That's twenty dollars. It depends on your palate, okay, um, and what your palate likes. And to be perfectly honest with you, that two hundred and fifty dollar bottle of wine, I would never buy again because for me, it wasn't that spectacular for my palate. Okay, and I understand what you say. So I have had some spectacular bottles of wine that cost me thirty dollars. Okay. I actually brought a hundred and sixty dollar bottle of wine. Um, I brought it for me, and, and you were disappointed, right? I was disappointed because it, I guess I I said to myself that probably I don't have a good palate for knowing what good wine tastes like. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But I didn't enjoy it, and I said I brought it because it was of a reserve. That's why I asked you about reserve, mm-hmm. and um, yeah. it had um, it had cognac in it as well. It was mixed with cognac. <laughs> Um, mm-hmm. And so I brought it because it was me and Al's anniversary. We were coming up on our, I think, 25th wedding anniversary. So I brought it so it can be special. But I have to agree with okay. you. I have enjoyed um, cheaper wines that have been great to me. Very good. As opposed right. to that wine that I, I mean, um, yeah, that I purchased. So that's why I was asking you, how do we, the normal individuals such as myself, who don't have the experience as you, how do we know what's a good bottle of wine and what's junk? Well, this is the thing. Okay, and I tell everybody that is that are wine drinkers nowadays, mm-hmm. go to your local Trader Joe's. If you have a Trader Joe's, you go and you buy the varietal. So a varietal is a Cabernet Sauvignon, a Pinot Grigio, um, um, Merlot, Malbec. You just go and buy a bottle, an inexpensive bottle. It doesn't necessarily have to be cheap, mm-hmm. but inexpensive. And if you like that varietal, varietal then you go to a higher-end store, mm-hmm. and then you buy one that's a little bit more expensive, like they start at $20. Mm-hmm. And then... Um, graduate up to maybe a $50 bottle of wine, but I wouldn't go more than $50, $60 for like an everyday wine. And then gradually um, let your palate decide what they like, what he likes to drink. So what I'm saying is, is that, yeah, I buy wine from Trader Joe's. I also buy wine from Total Wine. Mm -hmm. I also buy wine from a company called Wines Till They're Sold Out which they have, like, um, hard-to-find wines. Mm-hmm. And I just pick and choose what I like. Some I do like and some I don't. But I would suggest that if you find a good, uh, several good wines that you like, write them down okay. so that you'll always be able to find them again. Yes. I, I seem to have a, a great liking to Cabernet Sauvignon. I love that wine and I can pretty much buy it in anybody's um, um, label and it still tastes okay. good to me 
And also, um, was it well, Pinot Noir? Well, I will tell you um, the difference. Okay, so you like Cabernet Sauvignon, so yeah. I would buy a bottle of Cap- California Cab. California, and that's okay. That's the, the nickname because, you know, not everybody wants to go Cabernet Sauvignon. Yeah, that's yeah. Because that's the way you're supposed to say right, it, but right. anyway. Um, so California. Buy a bottle of Cab from California and buy a bottle of Cab from France. Okay. And then... Side by side, put them together and drink them. Drink a have a sip of the one from California, uh, preferably Napa, but Sonoma is good too. Okay. Um, and then try the bottle of wine from France. And I will tell you that you will know the difference right away. Oh, okay. So you're not going to tell me which so, one is the best. You're going to let me figure it out myself. No, I'm going to let you figure it out yourself. Okay. But I will tell you this, that in... Um, the French wines, and, and just remember this, that the French wa- French have been making wines much longer than California. Okay. So uh, I will tell you that. But I, this too, that a while ago, um, I, probably in the 1800s, there was a disease of the, the vines in France. So a winemaker took uh, a lot of the vines that were not diseased and they came to America and preferably California, and they grew those vines. Okay. So that's how, um, and then when the disease was all fixed and over with, they cleared up the disease of the vines, they went and they brought those vines back and, you know, regrew them in France. So California and France has similar um, tastes, but not exactly. And the reason why they don't have similar tastes, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to make you go and try to find that out. It's because of the soil. The soil is different when you're growing your grapes, and that's what makes um, the characteristics of your grape is the soil. Okay, that makes sense. Each of the the countries that make wine, Mm -hmm. and um, believe it or not, all 51 um, of our our states here in the United States make wine. (laughs) Oh, okay. And all countries make wine of some sort. I mean, we may not like to drink them, but, you know, they, they, every country um, in the world makes wine, even in Africa, yes. they make wine. I've actually tasted a few from different um, countries um, that, mm-hmm. I, um, that I actually South enjoy. South Africa has some um, wonderful wines, like their Cabernet Sauvignons are mm-hmm. really, really good, and their Cabernet Franc, that's really good wine. Mm-hmm. But South Africa is known for their Pinot Tosh. What is that? Pinotage is a grape that is grown in Africa. It's grown other places too, but predominantly Africa and um, South Africa. And um, it, it's um, it's a different type of taste. Mm-hmm. It's a cross between Cabernet, Merlot, um, um, Pinot Noir, uh, and it's only grown commercially in South Africa. I mean, it's like I said, there are other places where it's grown, but it grows very well in South Africa. Now, is is and that wine expensive? This, um, dark, fruity, um, like earthy, and again, it comes from the soil. Okay, but is it expensive? No, if you can get a a nice bottle of Pinotage for twenty dollars, beautiful. It's oh. a beautiful wine. Okay. And when you hear people say beautiful, they mean like the taste, like the, when when you can taste the fruit in the wine, mm-hmm. but it's not sweet. Okay, so I don't personally like sweet wines, but when people think of um, fruit, they think of it's sweet. Well, no, because grape, um, wine from grapes are different than from grapes that you buy in the store. Okay. But there are some wines that do have a sweetness to it, like the sweet reds. Absolutely. You know. And um, a lot of those wines, um, sugar has been added. I don't even like sweet wine, personally. Um, <laughs> yeah, but, you know, you got to learn to like everything. There I know. Sweet wines, sweet wines have their place um, on in, in the, the food chain here. So if you're eating dessert, a nice sweet wine is great for, like, a nice chocolate cake like imagine having a nice chocolate cake 
and just a glass of, um, let's say, um, Moscato. Okay, but or I, Riesling. But I like Moscato. Beautiful. I don't. I don't like Riesling though. I don't. don't like Riesling. No, I don't. Well, it depends. Okay, because remember that wine is always good with what you're eating. Okay. That's another thing about wine. I mean, we're all over the place here, but wine is also good uh, with what you're eating. So if you're eating a nice, juicy steak, you want a nice, hearty wine like a Cabernet Sauvignon Mm -hmm. or a Cab Franc or um, a Bold Merlot. Um, You wouldn't want, like, um, a white wine with a, a steak. You would want something hearty and red. Oh, now, okay. if you're eating seafood, a, a white wine is great. And the only wine, red wine, that I would even recommend with sea, seafood would be a Pinot, Pinot Noir. Okay. And um, it, it it just complements like a salmon. Mm-hmm. So it depends on what you're eating. Um, brings out the wine even more. Okay. So... When you say you don't like sweet wine, try having sweet wine with, like, um, um, chocolate cake. Or um, there's that pudding. um, um, I I forgot the name of the pudding, but uh, it's like, uh, uh, I can't even think of the name of the pudding right now. But something um, very rich. so Those things go it's more with of a dessert like wine. A sweet wine. Yeah. A dessert wine. And it doesn't have to be a dessert wine. It could just be a sweet wine because there are uh, dessert wines. Like oh. ice wine is a nice dessert wine. You get that really nice and cold and you you have it with, um, you know, uh, a dessert. And it, it complements the dessert. Oh, Green okay. brulee is what I was trying to think oh, of. Oh, right, so, right, yeah. You yeah. know, you have a nice... Um, dessert wine with like a cream brulee it just brings out the cream brulee oh okay you know I, I i'm glad i'm having this conversation with you because i'm gonna be real honest with you i just open a bottle of wine and drink it because i like it and i don't even consider most, the food that i'm eating with and most it. people do that they just open a, a bottle of wine and they drink it if they like it that's fine they'll buy it again if they don't like it then they won't buy it again right right but I didn't. That's your typical person. So I, I don't want people to, to, to think that, you know, in order to be a Somalia, you have to have um, a um, discriminative taste bud or, um, you know, a palate that's really way out there because that's, that's not it at all. Wine should be a personal choice of what you enjoy. Mm-hmm. So if you enjoy a glass of, let's say, um, a bold Cabernet Sauvignon. Mm -hmm. So that's your choice. Right. That's what you drink. And even if you like to to drink that Cabernet Sauvignon with, with like fish, Mm -hmm. like Goran, he doesn't care. He he will, he doesn't like white wine, so he will never uh, drink white wine with fish. Okay. He drinks his red and that's it. Okay. That, he sounds like me because I like (laughs) red wine. So, (laughs) and I like that particular one. I very seldom buy a white wine, but I do buy it for the summertime because I'm thinking it's a little lighter for the summer. Mm -hmm. So I will, Mm -hmm. I will buy a white wine for the summer. Well, there are some good white wines that you can, you can try. Okay. So there's a wine called Albarino and it's Spanish. Um, and it's from a grape called uh, Galicia. It's a uh, Galicia grape, mm-hmm. and it's very good. Now, it's it's on the dry side, but it has a little teeny sweetness to it, and that's what white wines usually are because the grape, the white wine grape is different, totally different from the red wine grape. You can always taste the fruit in, like, a white wine. You taste, like, um, kiwi. And sometimes you taste peaches and, um, you know, all of that, um, um, they call the fruit with the pits in it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you, those are the type of white wines. And then, you know, you have your, your Chardonnays and there are different types of Chardonnays. There's buttery Chardonnay, which I happen to love if I'm drinking white wine. I love buttery Chardonnays. But then there's those seal barrel Chardonnays that taste... Minerally, 
you know, like minnows. Yeah. And, you know, those are good with, like, fish that you put on the grill. Um, they're easy easy drinking. And then you have Pinot Grigio. That's, you know, the Italian wine. Yeah. And it's also good, like, an easy drinking wine if you're, you're going to drink, you know, white wine. White wine is not as complex and, and not, I mean, there's just as many uh, white wine varieties as there are um, red red wine varieties, but for the most part, people drink red wine um, because of a lot of its benefits. So, you know, uh, of course, experts are uh, quick to point out that wine is beneficial to your health in moderation only. Like, it lowers your risk of liver disease. Mm -hmm. It's healthier for your heart. They say that it's um, men who drink four to seven glasses of red wine weekly are half likely to be diagnosed with prostate cancer. I mean, there are research that actually has been, has proven this. Yeah. Um, drinking at least two glasses of wine a, a week may lower the risk of uh, kidney cancer. Um, and because it has this, it's called... Um, Resveratrol. <laughs> that may be the key to unlocking the secret of, of living a longer life. Mm. Uh, I mean, you can only go by like the French. The French drink wine every single day. Yeah. No, I uh, actually we heard that too. France, I was looking for some water, and so we went into this um, store thinking, "Oh, they have to have bottled water in here." So I asked the guy, "I says, so can I have a bottle of water?" He says, Madame, why do you drink water when you can drink three wine? <laughs> and I'm looking at him like, really? Can I have some water? <laughs> <laughs> so the French drink wine all the time. Yeah. But you know what? I have heard so, that it was um, and, healthy to drink wine. In fact, I remember um, when, when I go to the doctor and I have my checkup and she, you know, she asks if I drink and stuff like that. And I always say, well, I don't drink, but I, I do have a, a glass of wine from time to time. And she would say, oh, good. Mm -hmm. She would say, good. That's that's good for you. You can keep doing that in mm -hmm. moderation. So, you know, I, I drink wine also not just for the pleasure, because also because like you pointed out and like my doctor pointed out. It, it sometimes has benefits, mm -hmm. health benefits. So, you know, I want to be healthy. <laughs> so earlier I had mentioned that um, there was a disease in, in, in Europe. It was called um, Luxoria, uh -huh. and it's spelled P-H-Y-L-L-O-X-E-R-A because nobody, I don't say it right, but it's Luxoria. But... Um, a lot of the vines had to be replanted um, because of that disease. And there were 10,450 um, acres that were planted in Napa from plants because of that disease. So that's why when people compare wine from France and they compare wine from Napa, it gets kind of close. But Napa is a little bit... Um, you're not as strict as France. France is totally strict about making their wines. Whereas with uh, California, they're not so strict because California adds alcohol like spirits to your wines sometimes to fortify them. Mm -hmm. Whereas France, that's a no-no. Okay. Now, let me ask you a question. When you, when you buy a wine that, like say a blueberry wine, um, is is blueberries added to the grapes to to make it a blueberry yes. wine? Mm hmm All right. So it's when you called, yeah, they put like a an extract uh -huh. of um, blueberries in there so that you got you get the blueberry taste. Okay. Because there, I mean, obviously, you can ferment blueberries and make wine because any fermented fruit will make wine. Okay. So if I have a bunch of like. I happen to be looking at some pears that I have on the table. So if I just peeled my pears and fermented them and then went through the process of putting the yeast and all, that, that could turn into wine. So any fruit, you can have a fruit wine. Okay. But um, a real wine, when I say real wine, I'm not 
saying that blueberry wine is not real wine because most people that like blueberry wine thinks it is a, a real wine because it does have it it ferments it, it permeates and it becomes alcohol so it's actually wine but we're talking about wine in a sense of wine grapes grapes that really make wine not fruit because mm-hmm. there's a difference between fruit wines and grape wine okay that makes sense so, um, now that you have your license or you've been certified, does that mean you could work like in a restaurant or in a, um, a place where they specialize in wine? Is, is that what the license okay, is for? So, yeah. So most sommeliers, when, when they go through, um, because it's hard to go through this course. So I am only a um, second level sommelier. So that means that I've gone through course one and course two successfully and, and got certified. How many levels there are there? There is a level three, and then there is the master sommelier. Oh. And so, yeah, and I'm gonna tell you what that means. So level two, I can now call myself a sommelier and yes, I can work in a restaurant and I can recommend wines to people because I understand the basics um, of what wine is, how it's grown, what it consists of, and all of that. So I, yes, I am now qualified to recommend wines to you. Okay. And I can work in a restaurant. That's totally not what I wanted to, want to do, but, you know, most people that take that... Um, go through that training they do they're doing it because they want to work in a restaurant atmosphere or own a wine store or something of that nature so now third level um you're able to teach um, people about wine okay and a master sommelier can do it all (laughs) and let me just tell you it takes six years of studying to be six years or more of studying to become a master sommelier. You have to take a test that I heard that is grueling. I remember when we were in class, the teacher said uh, 95% of the people that take the master sommelier's um, test fail. Uh, Throughout, I don't know what the total is today, but when I took my course, there were only 158 master sommeliers throughout the world, not just the United States, throughout the whole entire world. Wow. And out of those um, 158 at the time, there were only 12 that were women. Wow. What made you want to do this? Um, Curiosity, I guess. Okay. I wanted to know where wine actually, I mean, how it was made. In order to make it, um... You have to know um, where it came from, um, what it tastes like, what it's supposed to taste like, you know what I mean? Right. So when you're drinking wine, like, okay, so we'll, we'll take your your Cabernet, so since you like Cabernet so we don't. Yes. When you taste a Cabernet, what do you taste? Um, you know, I, I don't know if I can identify it. I just like it. Okay, so the next time, I want you to write this down. The next okay. time you taste a Cabernet, I want you to look for these characteristics in a Cabernet because each wine um, has ca- um, char- characteristics okay. that you're supposed to be able to taste. Okay. okay so in a Cabernet, um, you should be able to taste leather sometimes. And I know you're saying leather. Yeah, okay. leather. Well, I'm writing this stuff down, so... <laughs> Most people, because I know I asked in class, well, you know, being the smart person that I am, I've never tasted leather. What does it taste like? <laughs> well, yeah, I was going to say that. <laughs> How would I even know? You know what that I mean? Yeah. And the teacher was quick to say, smell the belt. She had a belt there. Mm-hmm. Smell this belt and then taste this wine. And I swear to you, I taste the leather. Okay. All right, so I'm writing so, that down, leather. Blackberries. Okay. Um, a fruit called currant. Now, we sometimes say raisins, but raisins and currants are two different things. Okay. So if you, like, you may taste currants, 
Um, you may taste blackberries. You may taste blueberries. Um, you may even taste sometimes I taste licorice. You know that black licorice. Right, right, and right. typically those wines I don't like because I don't really like licorice and you know real licorice. So I don't like wines that remind me of licorice. Okay. So the next time you you drink a bottle of your favorite cab, okay, look for those qualities. Now if you don't taste them, don't force it. Okay, no. But if I'm, you do taste it, write it down. I'm going to. As a matter of fact, tonight because I have a bottle that I'm going to open. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to look for those qualities because, you know, basically mm-hmm. I just open up a bottle of wine and I drink it because I like it. But now that you've educated me, I'm going to look for some of these qualities. I am. And if you're aware, like on the back of your palate, you know how like you're gargling? Yeah. And I know some people say that's stupid, but it's not stupid because the back of your palate is where your, your taste buds are. So when you gargle, you know that part in the back of your, your mouth when you open your mouth, like where your um, tonsils are? Yeah, yeah. Well, if you get the wine back there and you kind of like gargle it and then swallow it, that's when you'll taste those those flavors, whether it's the blueberry or the leather or whatever. That's when you're you're going to taste that and then just swallow it. Okay. I'm, a, I'm seriously going to do that and I'm going to tell you exactly what I discover. Okay. I'm excited now. And then <laughs> for you, I would like for you to venture out and drink some other wines besides Cabernet. I know. I would like for you to maybe try Clar- Claret. Spell that for me. Um, it's C-L-A-R-E-T. Okay. Uh-huh. And I'll tell you the story of Claret. Okay. So in, in France, there's always... The French always has a blend. You always know this is a bottle of, of wine from France if it has Cabernet, and, and depending on which part of, because in, Fran- in France's um, um, wine country, mm-hmm. there are two distinct places in Bordeaux. You have the left bank and then you have the right bank. The right bank is where most of the Merlot, and on the left bank is where most of the Cabernet is um, planted. So with with that, you have wines that are blended, and a good um, blend for Bordeaux is always Cabernet, Cab Franc, and um, um, uh, oh God, um, uh, Petit Bordeaux. I'm sorry, <laughs> Petit Bordeaux. Petit and Bordeaux. It, those are like that that particular blend. So back to the Claret. Um, long years ago, um, the British used to buy the wine from the French, mm-hmm. and um, they felt that their cabaret, that their uh, Bordeaux um, was too uh, strong for them. So what the French did was is they made same Bordeaux, but they kind of watered it down for the British, and they called it Claret. Okay. Now, to me, I like claret. It, so, is watered know, down? Can, watered you down wine? Strong clarets too. Oh, okay. But <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's it's not as strong as a Bordeaux because the British, um, they they liked Bordeaux, but they just wanted it not so strong. Okay. I'm gonna try it. Yeah. So try claret. That's another good one. And Merlot. When you drink Merlot, what do you drink Merlot? I I used to drink Merlot. It seems a bit. Um, I won't say. I don't want to use the word strong. I'm gonna say heavy. Yes, I always felt the same thing about Merlot. But uh, Merlot is a very good red wine, and it's it's a key player in in Bordeaux in all the Bordeaux blends. Mm-hmm. Um, and in California, in Washington State. Um, they they love that grape. Goran is a, a that's his one of his favorites, Merlot. Okay. Um, and usually it has that black cherry, that herbal, you know, that medicine. Yeah. Like medicine. Yeah. You know, yeah. medicinal. Yeah, yeah. It and, seems heavy. And and, you know. and green peppers. Oh, that's right. It does have like a peppery taste to it. You're right. Mm-hmm. Yes, like green peppers. 
So the next time you drink a bottle of Merlot, I want you to do the same thing. I want you to like, kind of gargle it in your throat mm -hmm. and see if you can't taste that peppery or the black cherry or the medicinal-like medicine. And that's one of the reasons why I don't particularly, I mean, I do like Merlot and I, I will drink it with certain foods. It's really good, mm -hmm. um, like with pork, um, with some grilled meats. Mm -hmm with lamb, but you have to have an acquired taste for, for a while, okay. in my opinion. Uh, yeah, I know you do because, like I said, when I first started drinking red wine, that's what me and Al was buying, and I and you know I was drinking it, but I kept saying, "Hmm, I don't know, I don't really like this." And that's when I started going with the a little less. It seemed harsh is the, is the word I want to say, but not. I, I it just seemed strong, and I wanted something mm -hmm. a little bit lighter. A little bit lighter. So I have a quiz question. Do you know how many? varietals of wine exist i absolutely do not and i'm not even i'm not even going to attempt so to we, answer so when we think of grapes we think of like cabernet merlot cab franc um um petit Bordeaux, um you know just to name a few did mm -hmm. you know that there were over ten thousand varietals of of wine no i did not know that ten thousand is a lot so <laughs> it was a goal once upon a time in my life to go through all 10,000, and I realized you'll be a drunk by the time <laughs> you go through all 10,000 of those varietals. So How many have you gone through, though? <laughs> How many have you gone through? Um, I will tell you about 60. <laughs> No, because I know. Different varietals. Yeah, because I know that you and Gorman enjoy your wine and you have it with dinner, like every night, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, every night, right? So I can imagine that you've probably tried to taste as many of them as possible. Yeah, because just remember, it's not just about California and France. Okay, Italy makes beautiful wines like Barolo, um, Barbarisco. Um, uh, uh, Bunello, um, some that I can't even pronounce the word. So, and they make wines like Cabernet, mm -hmm. um, and now uh, Italy are making what they call Super Tuscan wines. And um, what those are is, remember what I told you about the strict coats that they have for wines like um, AOC, and honestly, I have forgotten some of the... Um, what these mean because I haven't looked at my books in so long mm -hmm. and so I enjoy the wine and I don't really care about the rest of the stuff anymore but they're called Appalachian controls you know that they have okay. um, and each country has their own designation designation mm -hmm. um, like uh, France has AOC um, I think Italy has a CC and all the other countries they, they, they follow suit but anyway um, Italy broke the, the rule of having one varietal in a wine and decided that they wanted to make super wine. So they mixed a whole bunch of wines together that was never mixed before in mm -hmm. Italy. And that's what they're calling their super Tuscan. Super Tuscan? And they're, they're super good, too, by the way. Oh, are they super good? <laughs> okay. Can I find super, super Tuscan good. over here in, like, a Trader Joe's? Um... Okay, so I will tell you that, you know, I spend a lot of time in Trader Joe's. Yes. And I don't see very many Super Tuscans there. I see your regular um, Italian wines. I, I don't see many uh, Super Tuscans, but I will tell you that, like, if you have a total wine, I do have a total wine. What about Costco? Because I have a tendency to buy my wines from Costco okay, and so so BJ's. The, the problem with, with me in North Carolina is is that our, our Costco does not sell um, spirits. Oh, okay, It okay. just strictly sells wine and beer. Okay. So we're controlled here in North Carolina, and mm -hmm. so if we, um, we have to go to um, um, places, I mean, they sell wine in Costco, but not the rest of the stuff. So did, you did ask me about wine, right? I'm yeah. sorry. No, it's, it's okay, though. Um, uh, be, okay. Yeah, just wine. So there are certain places that we, yeah, Costco has some, but I think a store with you being in New Jersey, 
you could probably find Super Tuscan even in your supermarket. Well, I don't know if I can buy wine in my supermarket here in Jersey. Oh, you can't buy wine in the super. Well, we can buy wine here in our supermarket. <laughs> yeah, see, I'm like, uh, I don't know about that. But in the BJ's and, you know, you or the Costco's. You might check with your Trader Joe's because your Trader Joe's may be different than ours. And the reason why I go back to Trader Joe's is because Trader Joe's has fabulous wines that are inexpensive. Um, Costco has fabulous wines that are inexpensive. Yes, yes, they do. Um, BJ's has fabulous wine that are inexpensive. Yes, they do. really good wines. And that's where I have a tendency to get my wine from. Like, if I go to BJ's, yeah. I'll just go ahead and stock up. Like, I have, um, I already did my stock up since I, Al doesn't really drink wine like I drink wine. So, you okay. know, we have the little wine case that holds 40 bottles. So what I try to do okay. is fill it so I have a wine for a while. So I still have right. uh, lots of bottles of the wine that I like, which is the, you know, the, the, the cab. But I, right. I, and I got a couple of the, the Pinot, was it Pinot Grigio? Because it's the white wine. Um, yeah, Pinot Grigio is good wine. Um, Pinot Gris is good wine. But if you're looking for a wine that's slightly sweet, but not really, really sweet, because again, I'm not really a sweet wine drinker, right. but Vouvray is another good wine from France. It's spelled V-O-U. Okay. V-R-A-Y. Volvray. Now, is that a white or a red? It's a white wine. Okay. And it's outstanding. It's from Loire Valley, uh, part of um, France, which is closer to Germany. Okay. So the the wine is slightly, it's, it's dry, but slightly sweet. And I'll tell you, if you like Mexican or spicy food, I do. It's like the perfect white wine. Okay, because I do like spicy food, so that would be perfect. Right. You know what else I need to do? the perfect white wine. Um, There are wines that I say, like, um, (laughs) you know, back in the day when when my palate wasn't, um, when I didn't have a palate, put it that way. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember my first wine that that I drank was um, (laughs) White Zinfandel. And... When I was in class, I, I asked, I made the mistake of asking about white Zinfandel, and the teacher looked at me and she said, <laughs> there is no such thing as white Zinfandel. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Then, then what we what have we been drinking all these years? <laughs> you were drinking blush wine like a rosé is what you were drinking. Okay. So what it was, it was probably about the six. So you remember I was telling you about when um, they're making the wines, they have the one, right. two, the three, the four. Well, this Zinfandel, what we call white Zinfandel, was probably seventh of the barrel. Okay. So that okay. that's the reason why it's thinner looking and, and cl- clearer. It's not as potent right. as the, the first batch of wine that comes out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. But, you so know, sometimes... Actually, Zinfandel is a, a red grape. Uh-huh. Um, and it is, um, it's a full bodied wine and it's usually got the flavors of blackberry, raspberry, uh, bramble fruit, you know, fruit that's, um, uh, on the vines kind of fruit. Mm-hmm. And, um, it, it's actually, um, the same as Primitivo. So what happened was, is remember I told you that there was some diseases in, um, of France, yes. and a lot of the vines had to be um, grown here in California. So one of them was Zinfandel, but it was the, the vine was called Primitivo, which originated from of all places Croatia. Oh, it, it was yeah. It's uh, um, from the Balkans, um, and it it's now. Um, called Zinfandel, but the original was called Primitivo. And if you can ever get your hands on a bottle of Primitivo, um, and I would get Italian Primitivo. Well, how do you um, spell that so I can get really the right good. spelling? What's the right spelling? Um, Primitivo is P R I M I T I V O. Primitivo. Okay. And that's a very great drinking wine. It is. It will remind you slightly of a Cabernet, but different. Okay. 
I wrote all this stuff down because I'm going to check it out. Okay. And one of the things that I have to learn how to do, though, is I, I need some kind of list. I guess I can go online and find the types of the types of wine you eat with certain foods because maybe that's what I'll try to do. When I make fish, right. I'll try to find a, a bottle of wine that goes with the fish, it, you know, if I have chicken or beef or whatever because maybe that's what I'll try right. to do. That, uh, if you're having something as, as, as mundane as, say, some cheese, some goat cheese, mm-hmm. some brie, some crackers, maybe a little meat, um, like, um, I, I don't know, a little salami or something like that. Okay. You can always pop a bottle of champagne. Oh, see, I forgot all about champagne. It's actually Everybody in the wine thinks, family, oh, isn't champagne it? champagne is a special occasion. No. Champagne is sparkling wine. And it's for any occasion. Right. We forget that. I forget that champagne yeah. is basically a bottle of wine. <laughs> mm-hmm. I have yep. to remember it's that. It's a sparkling bottle of wine, and it's beautiful. And I will tell you this. Um, it's, it's, it's made from um, Chardonnay grapes. Okay. So in order to be called champagne, um, the, the champagne has to be made uh, 100% from Chardonnay grapes. Okay. Well, how come they they taste differently? Each bottle of champagne that you open has a different taste to it. Um, because it could be that it's dry. It could be where the... the remember what I told you about um, where each of the grapes are grown, how the taste, why it tastes different? It's because of... The soil. The soil. Mm-hmm. So, depending... If you get a California champagne, it's going to taste totally different from a California champagne. Okay. If you get a, a champagne from, first of all, California cannot call its bottle champagne. They have to call it sparkling wine. Oh, okay. The That's, only, yeah. the only um, country that can call its bottle champagne is from the Champagne region of France, and it has to be Chardonnay. Okay. That's nice the to know, only too. only from Chardonnay. So I have seen bottles of champagne that say sparkling wine. Right. Okay, that's nice to know. This was yeah. a lot of information. And now that we're on that subject, in Trader Joe's, they've got a great bottle of wine. And Carolyn, I actually um, buy this wine by the case. Um, What's it called? And it's called Almond Flavored Sparkling Wine. Okay. And it's from um, Altima Creek. The best bottle of spark. I mean, if you can't, if, if you, this is like an everyday wine at Trader Joe's that costs five ninety nine. Okay. And tastes like a real nice bottle of sparkling wine. And I drink it all the time. I, I will give it a try. I will. And some of the, the sparkling, some of the sparkling wines, you know, they're not champagne. They're sparkling wines because they could be Prosecco. Oh, yes. So uh, Prosecco yes. is the Italian version of champagne. So you remember when I told you that only France can use champ- the, the name champagne, and it has to come from the Champagne region of France. Okay. Um, and it has to contain Chardon- 100% Chardonnay. On the other spectrum is Italy. So Italy has um, what they call Prosecco which is a sparkling um, wine like champagne, but there's a different taste to it, and right. it's because of the soil. California makes sparkling wines, um, and every, every country makes a sparkling wine, but they're not all. We tend to say champagne for everything that's sparkling wine, but technically uh, France is the only country that can be called Sparkling wine. I mean, uh, champagne. Okay, that's Everybody also good to know. Everybody else has to be sparkling wine. That is good to know. I'm going to note that myself. All right. All right. So this was a very interesting conversation. I myself learned a whole lot about wine, and I wrote down a lot of the stuff that you were saying. But for our listeners, where can they go to get information? Um, pretty much the like you just shared. Wide web. Uh, yeah, I know. Any any particular? The of things. I will tell you there are some good books. Like I um, 
when I finally got my uh, certification, Warren went out and bought me, it's called the Wine Bible. The Wine and Bible. it's by um, a, a lady named Karen McNeil, and it gives you a course of everything. I mean, I mean, it really, truly is a Wine Bible. It gives you pronunciations of words. Okay. Um, it gives you re- all the regions, what everything is supposed, all wines are supposed to taste like from that particular region. It gives you um, everything. It's like a, a book, a wine book of every wine there is. They give you like Italy's wine laws. Um, so Italy's um, um, three main categories are DOC, DOCG, and IGT. And the IGT is the one now that they had to make for uh, the Super Tuscans. Okay. Because, you know, these these are, just remember, these vines have been in these families for generations and generations and generations. So now the new generations and Generations are saying, okay, yeah, we like your wine, but we want to experiment and we want to make our own. Mm-hmm. And that's where these Super Tuscans are coming from. But in this um, wine Bible, Karen McNeil explains everything. Oh, okay. I mean, she, yeah. So, and you can get that from Amazon. Um, I buy all my stuff from Amazon, but they, she has sections on every country in the wine that they sell. And of course, the, her biggest section is um, France, Italy, and the United States. Oh, okay. That's good to know. I might actually pick that wine Bible up myself. Yeah. And I think that um, you can get this book um, for maybe 15, less than $15. Okay. I mean, if you buy it new, but if you, I mean, there's some used ones in circulation, and you can buy a used one. And the only thing that I noticed about the used ones is that, you know, they people have highlighted in the right. book, but I'm that only sure. makes it good for you. Exactly, because now you know what they were interested in. Mm-hmm. Works for me. And had I known that New York State makes great wines, before I left New Jersey, I would have been in New York State at every wine. <laughs> <laughs> Every yeah. vineyard that they had, I would have been there. Now, um, so you and Alvin should take advantage of that. Y'all should go to these vineyards and just, they have wine tastings. They have, um, um, when it's harvest, mm-hmm. if you help them with their harvest, like picking the grapes, mm-hmm. you know, they, they will give you a meal and it let you enjoy the, the fruits of your labor. <laughs> Okay, you know what? I I would love to do that. The girls and I went to uh is it Tama Tomasella? I think it's Tomasella Wineries Wineries over in um mm-hmm. Smithville. We did a wine tasting mm-hmm. over there and we brought a few of their bottles mm-hmm. of wine. They have a winery. I don't remember where, but I want to go to a a winery. I was actually going to um um to suggest that we take a trip. <laughs> to to wine country, uh-huh. and, and just uh, enjoy the fruits of their labor. <laughs> so New York State um, is where the wines are. So their leading wines is Cap Franc, Cap, your favorite Cabernet Sauvignon, okay, Chardonnay, and Gouvernet in there. <laughs> it takes everybody a, a long time, but Grimmitzermeter is a white wine, and I'm probably not saying it right either, mm-hmm. but it's a white wine, and it's sort of on the sweet side. And oh. then they have Merlot and Riesling and sparkling wines. Okay. Um, I guess I uh, can go online and find out where. New York State, and they, they have a, um, 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 a vineyard in Finger Lakes. You know where Finger Lakes is? No, I don't. Is that in New York? Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. And it's not that far. Um, okay. I mean, it would be maybe a day trip for you guys. Yeah. Um, so you said finger, New York. finger Lakes, like your finger in Lake? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm, I'm going to look it up. I'm going to look um, it up. Like near Seneca? You know where Seneca is? I do not, but that don't mean I can't okay. look it up. <laughs> yeah, so you know, you maybe um, make a... A long weekend, and you just visit some, and then there's Lake Erie, and there's 
Long Island, so that's not too far away. No, Long Island. No, it's not. It's and not- um, they have a vineyard called um, Palmer Vineyards in Long Island. Palmer. Uh huh. Okay. And um, um, I'm trying to think of some other ones that I know of. But I didn't even realize, I mean, because you really don't realize if you are if you don't study it, you just think that, you know, you buy your wine from the store and you don't give it a thought of where it comes from. Mm-hmm. But um, a lot of wines are made, and every, every um, state in the United States makes wine. Okay. And they have vineyards. And, they, and I was going to yeah, ask you, and they have vineyards. I will tell you that North Carolina, we, 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 we make wine too, but... Our wine is not that great. Okay. And can you guess why? No, why? Why? Come on now. What makes wine? Grapes. Well, yeah, besides the grapes, but it's the, it's the dirt. It's the soil. Oh, okay. And what kind of soil do we have here? Well, I don't know. What kind of soil we do we have? We have that there? red clay, and it doesn't, it doesn't really okay. grow very good wine. Grapes. Well, I can imagine that there's other states that don't have good soil. Um, yeah, but North Carolina, now, just moving over to South Carolina is totally different. The soil is different in South Carolina. Okay, but South Carolina, they have their own vineyards as well? I thought they were the Bible I state. They do. Mm-hmm. Every state in the United States has a vineyard. Oh, okay. Vineyards. Okay. And they make wine. I don't know. For some reason, I thought because was well, South Carolina is like the Bible state or something like that, or North Carolina, I would think that, that they would <laughs> refrain from uh, from from spirits right, so. and and wine and and such. So when, <laughs> in class, I kind of, I didn't, but somebody else mentioned that too. So aren't we the Bible state? Say, girl, there was more wine drank in the Bible. Now, don't be mad at me. I'm just saying. Oh, I know. And she said. He said there was more wine drank in the Bible, so why not? Oh, I know that, but you know. It was very funny. Okay, I know that to be true, but I'm talking about there are people who really take that thing very serious, like the woman who asked that question, or the man who asked that question. Yeah, but if if they're asking that question, why are you even in this class? That is true, too. That is true, too. I'm thinking that they just ask the question just to make sure, but again, it doesn't matter what state you're in. In every state in the in the United States, there are vineyards, there are winemakers, and they have businesses of making wine. People drink wine in all of these states. I don't think that there is any prohibition in any of these states that don't drink wine or alcohol or beer. So all of that is there. Okay. Well, it looks like our time is up. So I want to thank Thank you, you, Penny, for sharing all that information. Um, Most of this information I'll make available on the um, on the website, too, so that they can have this information. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for being my guest today. I enjoyed talking. You know, I I love talking about wine. So I know. So I'm going to have to we're going to have to have a conversation again so that you can tell us a little bit Mm -hmm. more. And then I can also share with you. Um, how I've experimented with all the stuff that you told me, then I can literally yeah. be able to tell you all the wines that I tasted, and we can okay. talk about that. All right. And don't discount the dessert wines. Make sure that you have you buy some port and that you buy um, twenty ruby twenty, and, and you don't drink a lot of it. Mm-hmm. You just drink enough when you're when you're eating some dessert, and you'll see how it enhances your dessert. Okay, I will do that. All right. All right. So you've been listening to Real Talk with Real People. My guest today was Penny Pavick. And um, have a good night. And I'll see you next time.